Uh, welcome to Mass European online course on chemical process intensification. So, uh, we are uh, discussing uh, the topics on module 5 as uh, optimization for process intensification and in this lecture under this module 5, uh, we will discuss uh, something about applications of optimization algorithm. We have already discussed uh, some techniques methodology of that uh, algorithms and also what are the different types of algorithms are actually present for analysis of uh, chemical process based on this uh, intensification of the process. And uh, in this case, so we will then uh, discuss about that uh, how that optimization algorithms can be applied. So, we will uh, discuss uh, two portions of this uh, lecture here applications of evolutionary optimization algorithm that is applied for uh, chemical engineering processes and also uh, one example like you know that optimization of reactive distillation process with certain uh, specified uh, you know that uh, optimization algorithm like it is called simulated annealing. annealing. So, let us uh, go back some extent of that uh, optimization algorithms where we have discussed the different types of algorithms for optimization of uh, single or multi objective uh, nature of that chemical engineering process. So, in that case evolutionary uh, optimization algorithm is one of the important uh, algorithm by which you can apply uh, or you can analyze that multi objective uh, nature chemical processes uh, with different constraints. And uh, in this case you know that traditional design of chemical process uh, that will consider a set of uh, sequences uh, uh, unit operations where uh, is uh, equipment is uh, generally developed to perform just one type of uh, modification to the process stream. And uh, that modification uh, actually generate changes in composition. Uh, energy content or that amount of uh, uh, you can say that uh, movement of the uh, you know that phases there. And so, uh, that is why we can say that uh, that chemical processes which will have a multi objective nature along with uh, different constraints can be you know that evaluated by the evolutionary optimization algorithm. And this evolutionary optimization algorithm in traditional chemical engineering processes, uh, you will see the uh, optimal design problems is uh, very complex, highly nonlinear with several uh, constraints. So, that is why uh, evolutionary algorithms uh, are generally uh, successfully used for the single and multi objective optimization of uh, those traditional chemical processes uh, in the area as of uh, process design, uh, process control and also reaction systems parallelly uh, separation also you can say there. So, that is why uh, we are just going to discuss something about that application of that evolutionary optimization algorithm. And in this case, uh, the objectives can be uh, decreased by uh, intensify the process and the new intensified uh, process units, it should be considered in such a way that, uh, that it must have optimal designs in order to take uh, advantages of all uh, benefits of the process. Now, why uh, that design of these new intensified units? is uh, more complex whenever we are talking about that chemical engineering process intensification. Of course, any process intensification we are talking that may be you know uh, that unit operations to be uh, designed in such way that will be uh, more complex in some extent. So, uh, why the design of those you know new intensified units would be more complex? In that case, there are smaller physical spaces sometimes required in your process intensification. In that case, uh, you know sometimes operating conditions to be reduced due to the existence of physical and reactive equilibria or the uh, incorporation of the technologies 
which are going to adapt for this uh, process intensification like microwave techniques, ultrasound techniques to analyze or to design all those special uh, technologies for the chemical process. Uh, it is very difficult to analyze based on the particular you know optimization techniques. So, because there are you know uh, various you know operating conditions to be you know considered for that and to be very complex. Therefore, the modeling of those process is more complex than the modeling of traditional chemical processes. For those cases you will see the optimization strategies especially the evolutionary algorithms become an important tool to reach the optimal design of intensified uh, process since the complete models of the process uh, are not required in this case of evolutionary uh, you know uh, that uh, optimization algorithm. So, uh, this uh, the optimization strategies especially the evolutionary algorithm uh, that is why are uh, very important to apply for such complex systems uh, to get the optimal design of intensified processes. Some applications of uh, multi objective evolutionary algorithms are given here. You will see uh, of course, uh, any process intensified phenomena has different objectives whenever it will be you know that uh, executing uh, any particular uh, process synthesis there. So, in that case uh, you have to solve those uh, multi objective uh, you know that uh, operating conditions. Uh, by those uh, you know that evolutionary algorithms. So, what are those uh, some special applications where you can apply the evolutionary algorithms uh, based on that multi objective functions. Now, application like you know catalytic uh, membrane reactor for the production of methanol and hydrogen. Uh, in this case the elitist non dominated shorting genetic algorithm along with a non isothermal model can be actually considered to analyze the uh, optimal uh, solution of uh, this particular process. So, we have already discussed that different uh, type of genetic algorithms and what are the different uh, steps and also sub algorithms all those uh, sets that already we have discussed in uh, our previous lecture. So, uh, in that case this genetic algorithm that is non dominated uh, uh, shorting genetic algorithm it is called NSGA can be applied uh, for such you know uh, application of catalytic membrane reactor for the production of methanol and hydrogen. Another application like the use of reactive distillation uh, where both conventional and uh, thermally coupled uh, systems are being used for the production of biodiesel. So, in that case uh, again that multi objective uh, genetic algorithm with uh, handling uh, constraints in order to generate the uh, Pareto front that is set of optimal solutions that can be applied for the uh, you know analysis of this reactive distillation. Another important uh, application there you know uh, it is called uh, transesterification uh, reaction uh, they are in reactive distillation column. In that case optimization of uh, that transesterification reaction in distillation uh, reactive distillation column with uh, you know thermally coupling system to be done and for that optimization the elitist non dominated uh, shorting again genetic algorithm uh, can be uh, used along with HISIS uh, process simulator software there. And also in the case of distillation with reactor for hydro desulphurization process of diesel there uh, you can use uh, you know uh, some you know competitive uh, results uh, between total uh, annual cost carbon dioxide emissions and amount of sulfur compounds of the hydro desulphurization process to be considered uh, for the analysis of optimal solution this distillation process with reactor for this uh, you know beneficiation of the diesel by 
hydro desulfurization. Another important application it is called extractive thermally coupled uh, sequences for the separation of uh, ethane and uh, carbon dioxide. In this case you will see that uh, the sequences uh, can be simultaneously optimized by minimizing the total annual cost and maximizing the acid gas removal there. So, in this case very important that uh, what are the sequences that you are going to consider there uh, in that particular extractive uh, you know uh, thermally coupled sequences for the separation of uh, ethane and carbon dioxide mixer that should be optimized by the minimizing the total annual cost and maximizing the acid gas which is to be removed. Hybrid distillation uh, or melt crystallization you know uh, that uh, using thermally coupled distillation schemes can also be you know analyzed for the optimization process where the design and optimization can be carried out uh, using as a design tool a multi objective genetic algorithm with uh, uh, restrictions that will be coupled with the process simulator like Aspen plus. So, these are the applications another applications like performing the biodiesel production in a counter current reactive extraction column. In that case uh, you can use uh, the Aspen custom modular which will actually uh, include the multi objective optimization of the hybrid separation uh, using evolutionary algorithms. And for the case of hybrid separations combining uh, nano filtration and distillation for the wide boiling mixtures the optimization can be analyzed under uncertainty using multi objective uh, evolutionary algorithms for the design of this uh, intensified separation that alternative uh, uh, can be performed there. And also optimization of the biodiesel process like production of considering uh, in that case production uh, that consider the uh, raw material as a soybean oil in that case uh, you can do that optimization by stochastic tool with uh, you know super pro designer tool and that is useful to optimize uh, the three objective of this type of problems like maximize the net profit, maximize uh, the number of chemical operators and also minimize the volatile organic uh, compounds that uh, emitted uh, during that uh, production process. So, you can optimize uh, uh, that biodiesel uh, process based on the raw materials of uh, that soybean oil by this stochastic tool of uh, super uh, pro designer uh, based on the objectives uh, like uh, maximization of the net profit, minimization of the volatile organic compounds uh, emission and also maximization of the number of chemical operators. Now, uh, what are uh, the different types of that uh, stochastic methods for optimization are generally being used that already we have discussed in our uh, earlier lecture. Uh, that different types of you know optimization algorithms, optimization methods are available to analyze or to solve the single and uh, multi objective optimization problems in uh, process intensification. So, here again we can uh, uh, have a list here like simulated annealing algorithm based method, genetic algorithms based method, differential uh, evolution based method, particle swarm optimization based method, harmony search based method and colony based optimization method and other different types of methods which are being suggesting by uh, different you know that uh, investigators nowadays. Even refinement of those algorithms even new new algorithms are nowadays coming that is you know revealed by different investigators after their uh, research. So, these uh, are a few you know that uh, stochastic method uh, which are already been discussed in the uh, earlier lecture in details what are the different uh, you know advantage disadvantage pros and cons and even you know that how to apply those things already we have in our previous lectures. So, here we will actually uh, concentrate on one uh, you know that optimization method uh, it is called simulated uh, annealing algorithm based method. 
like uh, if we consider uh, the optimization of reactive distillation column in that case if we take that integration approach to the simulation or optimization of the reactive distillation column by uh, adapting the mixer or also mixed integer nonlinear programming column uh, model uh, that is suggested by Sirik and Gu in 1994. So, uh, this uh, model actually it is called MINLP that is called mixed integer nonlinear programming uh, column model and uh, this model should be discussed here for this optimization of reactive distillation column. In this case, uh, they have actually considered this uh, synthesis of a reactive distillation column for the production of ethylene glycol. So, uh, they have taken some basis for this you know simulation and the simulation model is based on an uh, extension of conventional distillation columns and the optimization uh, is analyzed based on that result obtained by you know simulated annealing uh, based uh, MINLP algorithm. And this is also uh, called as you know that uh, M uh, SIMPS uh, algorithm uh, proposed by you know that uh, Cardoso et al in 2000s uh, there. So, uh, here we can say that uh, uh, if uh, the simulated annealing based uh, algorithm it is called M uh, uh, SIMSA that is called uh, you know that uh, MINLP and uh, which will be uh, based on that simulated annealing. So, this uh, uh, algorithm it is named as M SIMSA algorithm that is proposed by uh, Cardoso et al. And uh, based on this you know SIMSA algorithm we can say that uh, this uh, simulated annealing uh, is a well established technique for the optimization of uh, combinatorial problems and also this can be done uh, for the large scale functions that may assume several distinct discrete configurations there as per uh, Metropolis et al uh, which is suggested in 1953. And uh, this simulated annealing based algorithm is suitable for the optimization of mixed integer nonlinear programming uh, problems. Like you know that if you are considering that uh, synthesis of non equilibrium uh, reactive distillation column, there you can apply this you know simulated annealing based algorithm. And uh, from an optimization point of view, this uh, simulated annealing explores the uh, key features of the physical annealing process of generating transitions to uh, you know higher energy states. And also uh, it can be applied to the new states on uh, you know that uh, whether it will be accepted or rejected probability criterion on that particular acceptance and rejections which should uh, necessarily become more and more uh, you know stringent with the progress of the optimization. Now, this uh, algorithm may be uh, viewed as a randomization device and it allows some wrong way movements during the course of optimization. In that case, uh, you have to look at uh, the picture where this uh, wrong way movements during the course of the optimization whether it goes through an adaptive acceptance of uh, or rejection criteria or not. So, that is actually uh, you know uh, observed uh, by uh, Swain in 1991 this type of phenomena. What are the solver that uh, you can use that uh, for the optimization of that uh, you know particular problem of this reactive distillation column. In this case this seems a solver that uh, is suggested by uh, Cardoso et al uh, in 1996 uh, can be used and uh, it is a you know that solver simulated annealing based algorithm that uh, was developed for the solving constraints for uh, nonlinear programming problems. And uh, it is uh, generally built on a scheme that is proposed by uh, Presh and uh, Tukoski in 1991 for uh, unconstrained continuous optimization. And, uh, it combines the simplex method of uh, suggested by you know that Nelder and uh, Mead in 1965 
with uh, simulated annealing. And in this case, the role of that uh, nonlinear simplex uh, will be to generate uh, the continuous system uh, configurations. Also, while the role of simulated annealing uh, is to be there to allow uh, for wrong wave movements simultaneously providing convergence to the uh, global optimum solution. And then this algorithm shows good rough uh, robustness uh, like you know good insensitivity to the uh, starting point and reliability and also you can say that uh, how you can rely on this particular uh, system that can attain the global optimum for a number of difficult NLP problems that is reported by you know Cardo Suetol 1996. It may also be used with a faster non-equilibrium uh, variant of uh, simulated annealing program like this uh, you know that uh, which has good insensitivity to the starting point and also uh, has a reliability in the uh, attaining the global optimum solution. Now, M. Sims algorithm uh, was developed by that Cardoso et al. 1997. Uh, it is coming actually based on that extension of the uh, Sims solver uh, to deal with that uh, you know mixed integer nonlinear programming problems. And in that case, uh, the continuous uh, nonlinear solver uh, is to be used to uh, you know that update the uh, continuous uh, parameters while the metropolis algorithm is used in an outer loop to update the complete set of decision variables. So, uh, the uh, stochastically generating scheme proposed by uh, Dolan et al can be employed each time a different set of discrete variable which will be required uh, for this algorithm to analyze. And now, this uh, M uh, Sims algorithm is uh, simple to use since uh, it neither requires the preliminary you know uh, the identification of integer uh, candidates for the global optimum nor the identification of feasible or good starting points there. So, in that case this uh, M Sims algorithm is applicable not only to the uh, you know that mixed integer nonlinear programming problems, but also to the uh, uh, nonlinear programming and combinatorial problems also. When uh, if you are applying to this uh, NLP problems that is nonlinear programming problems, it may perform such the Sims algorithm that is uh, uh, suggested by uh, Cardoso et al. 1996 and when applied to the combinatorial problems, it performs as the original metropolis algorithm there. Uh, that is also uh, you know that given by uh, Cardoso et al. 1994. Now, let us have uh, this uh, synthesis of a reactive distillation column for the production of ethylene glycol that is uh, described by uh, Cardoso uh, et al. in 2000s uh, in their paper published in Chemical Engineering Science volume 55. So, uh, they have given this uh, problem definition like a set of chemical species if you are representing by uh, i that will be equal to 1, 2 like this i and also uh, a set of desired products and uh, production rate also and a set of chemical reactions uh, denoted by j like 1, 2 dot dot r. The stoichiometric coefficients for all species uh, is denoted by you know new i j and uh, uh, rate expressions uh, are given as that R j that will be a function of you know that uh, component fractions or you can say that compositions and also temperature. And the enthalpy of vaporization and uh, uh, vapor liquid equilibrium data, the feed streams composition, the cost parameters. So, these are the problem uh, definitions uh, which are uh, actually summarized like this. And, uh, they have considered this you know that uh, multi trade uh, distillation column there and uh, their goal was to determine uh, the optimal number of trays here hold up per tray hold up means uh, what will be the volume fraction of that particular phases per tray reflux ratio uh, condenser and reboiler duties and also uh, what should be the feed uh, tray locations 
uh, that are to be optimized uh, that was uh, there you know that goal. So, uh, it is shown in uh, figure like this that process uh, uh, ethanol water mixture there and uh, uh, it will be supplied at you know that different tray and uh, what should be the optimal uh, location of that uh, feed tray and what should be the optimal reflux ratio condenser and revolide duties. So, I am not actually expressing how these operations everybody knows that uh, how distillation column is being operated you know from the top that what is the vapor is coming after distillation some reflux will be you know sent back and then uh, it will be going downward and from the bottom also you know heavy product will be boiled and then uh, it will be uh, you know supplied to that you know from the bottom uh, then it will be go up like this this the distillation this uh, you know conventional distillation uh, column operation there. Now, uh, so uh, in this case uh, the main goal is to actually determine that optimum value of that number of trays, hold up per tray, reflux ratio, condenser and reboiler duties and also what should be the feed tray locations like this. Now, uh, what are the reactions actually being taken place here uh, in this particular uh, you know that reactive distillation column. So, in this case ethylene uh, glycol is uh, produced from the reaction of ethylene oxide and water there. So, ethylene oxide plus water that will be equal to like this, this uh, equation is given to uh, you here and the ethylene glycol produced uh, can further react with ethylene oxide to uh, produce uh, the unwanted byproduct uh, that is diethylene glycol. And in this case both reactions are you know highly exothermic and occur at uh, moderate temperatures that will allow that uh, you know production via reactive distillation column. So, here in this slides uh, the reactions are given how this ethylene glycol is produced from that reaction of ethylene oxide and water and also you know that uh, uh, ethylene uh, glycol produced can further react with that ethylene oxide that will give you that unwanted uh, byproduct is called diethylene glycol. Now, these both reactions of course, will be exothermic and uh, it will of course, be carried out with a moderate temperature and in that case it will allow you the production via reactive distillation column. Now, why uh, actually this uh, production of ethylene glycol via this reactive distillation? In this case the large difference in uh, you know volatiles uh, between ethylene oxide and uh, ethylene glycol that may you know uh, lead to a uh, rapid separation of these uh, two components in the column that may improve the overall selectivity there. And part of the heat required for the separation that can be obtained from the heat of reaction since it is exothermic reaction which allows the reaction and also it may reduce the energy cost there. So, that is why uh, reactive distillation is being actually uh, chosen for the production of ethylene glycol via reactive distillation. And uh, what are the data required for the problem here to optimize uh, this uh, uh, process? In this case reaction data is required, vapor liquid equilibrium constants, ideal uh, vapor liquid equilibrium uh, data uh, is required, what is the cost data and also what are the different thermodynamic data, uh, non-ideal uh, you know vapor liquid equilibrium data those are actually required. Uh, for analyzing this problem. And these uh, also uh, very important to know that here uh, the enthalpy of uh, vaporization of mixture is uh, assumed to be constant all over the column with the value of uh, you know 14 to 10 to the power 3 joule per mole uh, as per uh, you know CIRIC uh, that is given in 1995. So, you may uh, get this uh, all data uh, from this uh, the paper that is published by Cardoso et al uh, in 2000s uh, in chemical engineering science journal. So, you can uh, uh, take those data for further analysis there. Now, uh, how to actually uh, formulate that mathematical problem uh, uh, for those objective function and also cost terms there. So, as per uh, Siri can go uh, 1994 that objective function and the cost terms can be defined like this here. 
this uh, f o b j that means here function objective function uh, is equal to minimize of this you know what are these here summation of uh, you know components wise here c i and summation of what is that f i k plus uh, c h q b plus c w q c plus a f uh, into c s plus c i plus uh, uh, you know c r plus c c. So, uh, as per this equation number 1 you can actually optimize this uh, uh, process where uh, some notations are given here uh, as per equation 1 that c i will be equal to the cost of raw material i f i k this is defined for the feed rate of material for i to uh, tray k and c h is actually the cost of the steam uh, and c w is the cost of cooling water which is uh, required for that distillation and also you know that uh, uh, q b and q c that will be uh, you know reboiler and condenser duties which are very useful for that you know distillation operation a f uh, is uh, actually uh, referred to an uh, annualizing factor and uh, also c c s c c i c r and c c all those terms are uh, actually referred uh, for the installed costs of the column shell trays reboiler and condenser respectively so here in this slides uh, those terms are given here and uh, then how to calculate the column investment cost that can be obtained uh, from this equation number 2 and 3 are given in the slides here. Uh, it is given by you know Douglas uh, in uh, 1988 and this C s uh, can be calculated from this equation number 2 uh, and uh, C c i can be calculated from this equation number 3 where the terms are defined here m and s actually represented uh, here for the Marshall and Swift index that is published periodically by the chemical engineering journal and uh, D is the column diameter, uh, H is the height of the column and F c and F uh, c dash uh, are uh, you know construction factors and also H k is referred to as the height of the tray k. So, from these two equations you can calculate the column investment uh, cost as per this equation. And uh, then uh, how to calculate the uh, reboiler and condenser investment uh, cost that can be actually calculated uh, by these two equations of 4 and 5 that is C r that is cost of reboiler that will be equal to C r 1 plus C r 2 into Q b and C c for uh, condenser investment cost that will be C c 1 plus C c 2 into Q c. And uh, here the height uh, of the tower is evaluated by H that will be equals to A 0 plus summation of you know H k. Uh, if there are n number of uh, trays then you have to calculate that uh, height respectively. Where here A 0 is a fixed extra column height to be considered which will corresponds to the free space below the bottom tray and the above the top tray there. And uh, uh, here the heights of the liquid in tray k that will be denoted by h k that are calculated by you know h k that will be equal to h mean plus 1.27 into w k by uh, here d square as per equation number 7. And uh, in this case you know in the slides this h k, uh, h k to be calculated based on that uh, minimum tray spacing and also uh, what should be the corresponding volume. Uh, that also to be considered here for the uh, calculation of height of the liquid in tray k. So, this uh, height of the liquid in tray k actually as a function of that minimum tray spacing and you know corresponding volume of the liquid and also diameter of the column. According to this uh, Sirik and Gu, the uh, values for uh, this H and H mean respectively can be set uh, to 3.0 and uh, 0.61 meter. So, as per this equation number 7 after substitution of this uh, you know that H mean and also H then uh, what should be the you know uh, W k that also you can calculate. Now, substitution of all expressions into equation number 1 that is objective function after some algebraic uh, you know simplification 
that will give you this equation number 8 and uh, this equation uh, will give you then uh, you know that total objective function based on that different uh, you know uh, that uh, cost function uh, and also cost parameters you can say. And uh, after that uh, you have to you know solve this problem optimization problems by algorithm. So, for that you have to you know you have to assume some you know uh, constraints there in this case uh, as per Cyric and Gu uh, 1994 uh, for this reactive distillation column and they have developed uh, you know the reactive distillation column model based on these following assumptions like the vapor and liquid phases are to be in equilibrium on each tray that you have to consider. No reaction occurs in the vapor phase that also to be considered. The liquid phase is always to be homogeneous that is well mixed and the enthalpy of the liquid streams is uh, to be neglected and also the enthalpy of the vaporization should be considered as constant. Both condenser and uh, reboiler are should be uh, total and also uh, the temperature dependence of the reaction rates can be expressed in an uh, you know that uh, Arrhenius form. So, Arrhenius uh, equations to be used for that you know the reaction to calculate the reaction rate and it should be temperature dependent. And uh, uh, column model how actually that column model is uh, developed as per that uh, Siddiq and Gu uh, they have given uh, the following equations uh, from the material energy and uh, stoichiometric balances uh, that is material balance over the bottom tray they have given this F i 1 minus L 1 x i 1 to 1 minus beta plus L 2 x i 2 minus V 2 k i 1 to x i 1 plus summation of v i j j i j 1 that will be equals to 0 where i will be equal to 1 to c. This is as per equation number 9. So, you have to consider this equation number 9 uh, for uh, your uh, you know calculation. So, as per this uh, you know material balance over the bottom tray that uh, you can consider this uh, equation number 9. After that uh, you have to do the material balance over the tray k uh, this equation number 10 uh, is giving the material balance over the tray k and uh, what are the stoichiometric equations that uh, can be actually uh, obtained from this equation number 11 and 12 is given in the slide. So, summation of x i k that should be equal to 1 and summation of k i k into x i k should be equal to 1. So, from this 11 and 12 equation number uh, you can calculate what should be the stoichiometric uh, coefficients there. And uh, in this case uh, some notations are also given as per equation 10, 11, 12. Uh, so, those uh, notations to be actually considered uh, for this particular uh, equations uh, for you know as the understanding of the uh, uh, you know different uh, stream functions and other whatever uh, parameters are to be there. And then uh, you have to do the energy balance over the tray k that uh, equation 13 is giving uh, this energy balance uh, equation and uh, material balance over the reboiler what should be that that equation 14 uh, is uh, the you know material balance over the reboiler whereas this overall balance of the component i uh, can be uh, expressed by this equation number here if we consider it as uh, 15 equation number 15. So, this equation number 15 will give you the overall balance of component i. So, uh, we are getting uh, that material balance over uh, you know tray k, energy balance over tray k, material balance over the reboiler, what should be the overall balance of component i. And then uh, you have to consider uh, that uh, you know distillate molar flow. So, in that case this uh, distillate molar flow d i s t it will be denoted by that. So, is uh, uh, calculated from the difference between the vapor flow of the top tray that is V n and the uh, liquid flow uh, onto it that is uh, denoted by L n plus 1 that is uh, as per equation number 16 then you can calculate the distillate uh, molar flow that will be equal to V n that is vapor uh, flow and also you know that uh, 
a minus ln plus 1 that is liquid flow. So, for total condenser uh, you can consider that x i n plus 1 that should be equal to x into d i and also x d i should be equal to k i n into x i n. So, according to this equation number 17 and 18 you can calculate uh, what should be the mole fractions uh, uh, in uh, tray n plus 1 and also n. And if you are considering the bottom flow rate, uh, the molar flow rate of the bottom denoted by V0 uh, uh, can be calculated by this uh, beta into L, uh, where beta is called uh, boil up fraction of uh, liquid stream L1 that is vaporized in the reboiler. So, beta should be is equal to V0 by L1 that is given in equation number 19 in the slide. Now, uh, after that uh, you have to consider the kinetic and thermodynamic relationships, the extent of reactions xi uh, you know j k and the vapor liquid uh, partition coefficients uh, that is k i uh, uh, k uh, should be considered and those uh, uh, can be computed uh, for component i on each tray by this equation. Uh, like this 20 and also equation 21, where this here W k this uh, and T k are the liquid uh, hold up and the temperature of the tray at uh, k. And this uh, you know reboiler and condenser duties how to calculate that it can be calculated uh, from this equation number 22 and 23 that is q b is equal to beta lambda into l 1 and q c is equal to lambda into v 1 v n and uh, then q b is computed as the energy required to vaporize a fraction b of the liquid of the bottom tray and uh, q c is uh, computed as the energy that is required to completely condensate the vapor flow rate of the top tray. And then uh, how to calculate that column diameter? The column uh, design that will be required for the evaluation of the diameter D which is computed or calculated for the conditions at the bottom of the column from the following uh, that is you know that equation that is denoted by equation number 24 uh, uh, that is given by Douglas uh, in 1988 or you can follow that uh, uh, Sirik and Gu 1994 uh, paper. So, where in this case uh, the C D is a constant uh, which is actually evaluated uh, by knowing the molecular weight of the gas and the bubble point of the gas and the column pressure. So, uh, it has the value of you know that 0 0.01331 as a dimension less as per you know that uh, C D can go that is given in 1994. Now, after that uh, you have to evaluate the objective function. Now, the objective function that is actually minimization of the total annualized cost which is composed of two basic terms it is called annual operating cost and the annualized investment. The annual operating uh, cost actually uh, it will come based on that raw material stream and cooling water that is set for the operation uh, annually and it will be considered that annual operating cost. And then, uh, annualized investment should be the cost of the column shell, trays, reboiler, condenser that will correspond to the annualized investment. And to evaluate this objective function, uh, the operating conditions that would be determined by the column uh, simulation for each decision vector that uh, have to be you know that known uh, for that you know evaluation. Now, in this case what are the constraints? The constraints are you know that V k less than equals to uh, F max here in the slides all those constraints are given uh, L k uh, should be less than equals to F max and summation of F i k should be less than equals to F max and W k should be less than equal to W max and the maximum number of trays should be n uh, max. So, in this case you have to remember that this problem is a large highly nonlinear non-convex problem function of n max. So, since the material balances contain you know that uh, bi and tri uh, linear terms and the reaction terms in this case uh, the paper liquid equilibrium evaluation and also the objective functions uh, all those you know that are 
you know highly non-linear. So, it will be very complex uh, and uh, the to get that uh, conversation or you can say it will be very highly non-convex uh, problem uh, for your analysis. And uh, in this case what are the variables for the optimization problem to be considered? In this case there are you know the 3 n max plus 1 decision variables. 1 is in t uh, corresponding to the maximum number of trays n max and uh, you know uh, 3 times of uh, maximum number of trays uh, should be decision variables that will also be continuous like the boil a fraction beta the n max uh, feed flow rates that will correspond to one of the feed and n max minus 1 feed flow rates corresponds to the other component and uh, in this case uh, you know that uh, the feed flow rate into the first uh, you know first rate next to the reboiler to be considered here and also n max uh, liquid uh, hold ups to be considered there. So, for the simulation of the column with n max trays all the uh, 3 times uh, that is 3 n max continuous variables are required. However, uh, in this case for a column with n trays uh, where n is less than n max only 3 n continuous variables are involved while the other 3 into n max minus n are simply ignored in this case. And in this case the simulation purpose you have to use that simulation of reactive distillation process uh, which will involve the simultaneous uh, solution of material and energy balances and stoichiometric relationships. This corresponds to the solution of a considerable large set of nonlinear equations. And uh, uh, for the calculation procedures that you have to you know that consider these uh, categories given in the slides like methods using equation. Uh, for decomposition or uh, tiering or partitioning, relaxation techniques, methods incorporating Newton or uh, you know quasi Newton algorithms, uh, homotopy continuation methods like this. So, you can follow this uh, uh, Lee and uh, Dudukovic uh, that is published uh, uh, in Computers and Chemical Engineering Volume 3. So, you can have the idea how to calculate that uh, you know that uh, calculation procedure is there and details it is given there. Now, uh, there are you know several methods are actually decomposition methods, relaxation techniques, Newton or quasi Newton uh, methods, uh, homotopy continuation methods there. Now, decomposition methods actually it will allow the identification of blocks which need the simultaneous solution and blocks which can be solved sequentially. Relaxation techniques. Uh, in this case liquid phase compositions are to be computed based on non steady state material balances and which in subsequent iterations proceed towards the steady state solution there. Newton or quasi Newton uh, methods in this case uh, uh, converse quickly for suitable uh, starting gauges and uh, in case of homotopy continuation methods the methods uh, have the advantage of forcing the desired solution by uh, tracking a homotopy curve regardless of the choice of the initial estimates. So, among these you know that uh, various methods relaxation technique is relatively more suitable to use uh, for the calculation. Now, general structure of that simulation problem a simulation model can be proposed based on the following steps like this you know that an initial estimate of the molar feed flow rate not specified by the decision vector like a torn uh, recycle or variable is specified there. An initial estimate of the composition profile in the column uh, to be next uh, uh, to be obtained and then uh, this estimate uh, can be improved by a relaxation method. The material balance equations then to be solved with the Newton Raphson method and then new composition profile is to be calculated. And the torn variables is uh, to be reevaluated, and the equations that describing the reactive distillation process are again to be solved there. And uh, the algorithms uh, which will be ends up when the global material balance to the column is to be verified after convergence on the torn variable, and also uh, or when a non uh, you know uh, plausible uh, column is obtained there. So, these are the solution algorithms are given in the slides please go through this uh, 
slide uh, uh, one by one this uh, you know that solution algorithm is given there I think uh, you can follow for this solution method how to actually that uh, uh, you know systematic way that problem can be solved. And uh, in this case uh, initiation is the very important one that how to initiate uh, that uh, you know gauge of the turn in that case uh, it can be you know that large enough but at least 50 percent larger to accommodate the desired production rate that will consider that uh, conversion uh, which is not complete there. For the subsequent steps of the simulation you can gauge uh, the initial composition profile generally based on the feed composition. Uh, considering the same liquid composition all over the column there. Like uh, as per Bestos in 1987, you can use this equation number 25 for this initial composition gauge. Now, algorithm for the initialization in that case uh, the algorithm for the initialization of the composition profile can be uh, developed tracking into account the you know two reactions and the specified product flow rate typically from the stoichiometry of the reactions the following reactions can be obtained that is in equation number 26 and 27 and the composition in the uh, tray next to the reboiler and the global extent of the reactions uh, can be computed uh, with the estimates of the uh, product uh, flow rates like P1, P4 like this here. And uh, assumptions for initial composition of profile estimation here in this case the extent of reactions that is R1 and R2 that has been given in uh, earlier slides that is should be uh, you know is the same in all trays with uh, liquid hold up and null in all the other trays in that case. And the starting gauge for the composition of the liquid phase uh, on the last tray N is to be 95 percent of the component 2 and 5 percent of the component 3. And uh, the composition of that uh, you know component uh, 1 on tray N uh, is uh, re-evaluated if the liquid hold up for the reaction exists. And for each one of the other trays with the estimated composition of the top and bottom trays this composition of the components 2 to 4 are computed using that linear interpolation and the composition of the component 1 uh, which is set null for all trays there. So, with the starting gauge for the composition profile the temperature profile can be computed there. And uh, the temperature on each tray uh, can be computed with the corresponding stoichiometric vapor phase. The solution of this equation can be obtained with the Newton Raphson method. And also, liquid and vapor molar flow rates also uh, of the tray uh, can be calculated with the reboiler material balance for the species that will correspond to the uh, specified product. Now, uh, so, what is this actually Newton Raphson methods? The Newton Raphson method uh, uh, is used to compute that composition profile by solving the material balance. The application of this method uh, is based on the algorithm proposed by you know that Bestos in 1987, uh, but considering that the chemical reaction may be distributed over the several column trays and with non ideal vapor liquid equilibrium it can also be considered that the reaction may be uh, you know circumscribed to a single uh, tray. Whereas, in the relaxation method uh, it can be used uh, for the requirements uh, uh, where the, a suitable uh, starting gauge for the composition profile is required. And also uh, the initial starting gauge for the composition profile is also uh, subsequently to be improved by the application of a relaxation method during a pre specified number of uh, you know that iterations. Now, uh, the convergence uh, criteria also uh, to be considered there that uh, during that simulation uh, you know that uh, uh, with a feasible uh, you know distillation column when the global material balance of all components uh, should be obeyed that uh, simulation ends up. And if uh, convergence on the recycle variable uh, generally uh, obtained without convergence on the global material balance. Uh, 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 in that case uh, what you have to do the distillation column is not a feasible one and in that case the global material balance is assumed to be verified when this equation number 28 uh, to be uh, uh, you know that satisfied. The convergence of the recycle variable are uh, 
f is verified when this uh, here it is given in the slides this one. So, uh, this equation number 28 uh, to be verified uh, for the uh, global material balance uh, for the convergence criteria. So, uh, I think I should uh, stop here because there are several also uh, materials also uh, for the consideration of this uh, you know optimal solution. So, I have given that basics of that uh, optimization techniques by the simulated annealing uh, for this reactive uh, distillation systems what are are the different criteria, what are the different objective functions, what are the you know that uh, assumptions to be considered there. So, uh, I think uh, you have some idea uh, which uh, may be helpful for further understanding of that optimization problem uh, for this chemical engineering process intensification. I would suggest you to uh, go further this uh, textbooks even uh, some other you know that uh, uh, research papers that I have cited here in the slides also for your uh, further understanding. So, thank you.